Hello, I'm Jen. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel, Literary Love 123, where I like to use my masters in English to extol the virtues of the horror genre. Today's video is a July TBR video. Buckle up is going to be a wild ride for July. <sighs> I am so excited about my TBR for July. So I want to kick off this video to talk about the first readathon slash watchathon event that I will be participating in for July. And this takes place the entire month of July. And this is Giallo July, which was created and is hosted by Alex at the Bookubus. And I will link her channel down below. She has a couple of co-hosts too. So I will also link their channels down below. So today I'm just going to talk about the reading prompts for Giallo July. So the first prompt is Giallo, yellow on the cover. And for this prompt, I am going to be reading, um, just a minute, let me look down here, Lost in the Garden by Adam S. Leslie, because there are some flowers on the cover in here. I talked about this in a recent video, I think in a book haul video, but uh, just in case, I'll go ahead and give you a quick synopsis here. Heather, Rachel, and Antonia are going to Almondby. Heather needs to find her boyfriend who, like so many, went and never came back. Rachel has a mysterious package to deliver, and her life depends on it. And Antonia, poor love-struck Antonia, just wants the chance to spend the day with Heather. So off they set through the idyllic yet perilous English countryside, in which nature thrives in abundance and summer lasts forever. And as they travel through ever-shifting geography and encounter strange voices in the fizz of shortwave radio, the harder it becomes to tell friend from foe. Creepy, dreamlike, unsettling, and unforgettable, you are about to join the privileged few who come to understand exactly why we don't go to Almondby. So the second prompt is to, um, well, let me tell you the title of it, The Bird with the Crystal Plumage. This is a book with an animal in the title or on the cover. And for this one, I have chosen Fragile Animals. And I talked about this in another video too, but I'm going to go ahead and talk about it here again. When an ex-Catholic woman develops a sexual relationship with a vampire, she is forced to confront the memories that haunt her religious past. Struggling to deal with the familial trauma of her Catholic upbringing, hotel cleaner Noel travels from Edinburgh to the Isle of Butte. There she meets a man who claims to be a vampire, and a relationship blooms between them based solely on confession. But as talk grows sacrilegious and the weather outside grows colder, Noelle becomes hounded by memories of her past, her blasphemous sexuality, and the love she lost while stuck in the closet, of her mother's affair with the local priest and the part she played in ending it. The third prompt is All the Colors of the Dark, and this is to read a book with a color in the title. For this one, I'm going to read a book by one of my favorite authors, and that is The Once Yellow House by Gemma Amor. I have a Kindle edition, so I'll pop up that picture. Um, and let me tell you what this one is about. The Yellow Massacre of November 19th, 2020, in which 347 members of a secretive society known as the Retinue were brutally slaughtered has gone down in history as one of the most horrific and compelling unsolved mysteries of the decade, if not century. So far, information about this tragedy has been patchy and heavily censored by authorities. Questions abound. What was the exact cause of death of so many victims? What role did married couple Hope and Thomas Gloucester play in the massacre? What exactly went on at the property known as the Once Yellow House, 
where the retinue were encamped. And are the rumors true? Were the retinue really a cult? So far, these questions have gone unanswered until now. The fourth and final reading prompt for Giallo July is the Red Queen Kills Seven Times, a violent word in the title. So I may be stretching this one a little bit because I'm using horror as my violent word, but this is Final Girl Redo or Redux by Kimberly Pinson. It is a relaxed exploration of women's place in horror movies. So let me read the synopsis of this one. Horror is a woman's genre. Whether behind the camera or in front of it, women have been a mainstay of the genre for over 100 years. While people may argue that the genre hates women, I think it loves them more and I'll show you how it's true. It's okay if you don't believe me. Pull up a chair, grab a drink, and let's talk all things women in horror, final girls, ideal victim characteristics, gaslighting, screaming, phallic weapons, rape revenge, and ultimately why women love to scream. So I'm interested in seeing what Kimberly Pinson has to say about this. Um, I would be interested anyway, but you may have heard me talk about this on a few other videos. I am going to be doing a series on Final Girls uh, here on my booktube channel and you'll notice uh, some other final girl type books coming up on my july tbr too so now i'm going to switch gears from giallo july to talk about summer ween summer ween is created and hosted by gabby reads which i'm sure you've heard of but i will link her channel down below as well as her summer ween announcement video and so let me talk about the prompts for summer ween and the books that I have chosen for that readathon. I'm going to talk about the first two prompts for the Summerween readathon together because I'm going to be double dipping those prompts. Um, and prompt number one is to read a book in the dark. Prompt number two is to read a thriller or horror book. So I have chosen an audio for this so I can listen to it in the dark and it does fit that thriller horror prompt. And the book is Final Girls by Mira Grant. So let me give you the synopsis. What if you could fix the worst parts of yourself by confronting your worst fears? Dr. Jennifer Webb has invented proprietary virtual reality technology that purports to heal psychological wounds by running clients through scenarios straight out of horror movies and nightmares. In a carefully controlled environment with a medical cocktail running through their veins, sisters might develop a bond they've been missing their whole lives while running from the boogeyman through a simulated forest but can real change come so easily esther hoffman doubts it esther has spent her entire journalism career debunking pseudoscience after phony regression therapy ruined her father's life she's determined to unearth the truth about dr webb's budding company Dr. Webb's willing to let her, of course, for reasons of her own. What better advertisement could she get than that of a convic convinced skeptic? But Esther's not the only one curious about how this technology works. Enter real-world threats just as frightening as those created in the lab. Dr. Webb and Esther are at odds, but they may also be each other's only hope of survival. So this is kind of giving me a uh, full immersion by Gemma Moore vibes. And that was one of my favorite books in 2023. So I'm excited to get to final girls. The next two prompts for uh, Summerween, I'm also going to talk about together because I'm double dipping those two. And this is to read a book with a night sky on the cover and read a book with five words in the title. So I have chosen A Child Alone with Strangers by Philip Fricasse because the audiobook picture does have a night sky on the cover and there are five words in the title. So let me tell you what A Child Alone with Strangers is about. When the young Henry Thorne is kidnapped and held prisoner in a remote farmhouse surrounded by miles of forest, he finds himself connecting with a strange force living in the woods using that bond to wreak havoc against his captors. 
unknown to the boy, however, is that this ancient being has its own reasons for wanting the interlopers gone. There is something hidden beneath the house, tucked away in the dark, damp root cellar, waiting for its return. Now, I have read two books by Philip Fricasse before, and I loved both of them. Uh, those, <coughs> excuse me, those books were Gothic and Boys in the Valley. So I have high hopes for this one. Prompt number five for Summerween is to read a book that takes place in the summer. So I'm double dipping with a book I'm reading for Geology July and counting Lost in the Garden by Adam S. Leslie for this prompt. And then outside of the two readathons I'm participating in, I have one more book that I would like to get to this month, and that is Final, The Final Women by Pardeep Ajla. I'm not sure if I'm saying that name right. And I heard about this book from Christine at Secrets Reads. Uh, she loved this book. So I'm going to link her channel down below. But let me tell you what The Final Women is about. The mass murdering phantom of Haven Cove is dead. For the one who killed him, however, life has never been the same. How do you return to normality after facing such a monster? How do you live when consumed by guilt, anger, fear, and denial? How do you connect with others when no one understands what you've been through? But there are others, final girls of their own Haven Cove massacres. And now, 30 years later, they must all face a new question. What do you do when the killer returns? This kind of reminds me of the synopsis and the story, um, The Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix, which I enjoyed. And I am interested in following Final Girls after the traumatic events to see how these events continue to play upon their minds as they try to go about their day-to-day -day lives. I'm very invested in that. And that's going to be one of the things that I explore in my final girl series that I'll be working on. So that wraps up July. I would love to know if you're participating in Giallo July or Summerween. And I would love to know also, what are you reading for July? Which of the books I read have you read? And what did you think of them? Whether you uh, have good or bad things to say, I'm interested. Thank you so much for watching. And if you like this, I would definitely appreciate if you would hit the like button and subscribe. And I will see you in my next video. Bye. Mm -hmm.